What's going on everyone, Trust the Buzz here. If you are new to the channel, just know I make daily Charlotte Hornets content. So if that interests you, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Um, in today's video, if you cannot tell by the thumbnail title, we are gonna talk about an interview that Mitch Kupchak had with Hornets Hivecast with my guy Sam Farber over there that was doing basically just an interview. Now, the reason I wanna talk about this interview is just because one thing and one thing only, Mitch Kupchak was adamant about how the Hornets are gonna make the playoffs. And honestly, that's just, I, I'm tired of hearing that, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. I mean, we don't know everything that's going on with Miles Bridges, so he obviously knows something we don't know. If he's saying this current roster can make the playoffs, we could have ran the team back from last year, and there would have been doubt of whether this team would make the playoffs. So all we did was add a rookie in Mark Williams, and then, you know, we don't know what, like, the two-way situation is going to look like, what the end of the bench necessarily is going to look like, but, like, with Montrez and um, Isaiah Thomas. But, you know, that we haven't done much. And, that like, the teams around us got so much better. Like, the Wizards, I know they're not, like, some, comp you know, championship competitors, but they definitely got better. You have Porzingis and Bradley Beal and Monte Morris and, you know, Johnny Davis, uh, Will Barton. So the team just got better. And I feel like we got worse in a way. We don't know what's going on with Miles Bridges, like I said before, which I want to do a video on that because, you know, a lot of timetable stuff is going on with that. But it just seems like Mitch Kupchak just knows something we don't because he's adamant about how the Hornets are going to make the playoffs, and I just don't see it. We needed a center. We still need a center. As good as I think Mark Williams is and can be, he's not the center that's going to elevate us. He's going to make us better for sure, but he's not going to center that's going to elevate us to win a playoff series like Mitch Kupchak said. So I don't know where he's getting this from. He's been saying, this and every year at the end of the year he says well we overestimated well don't you think you're overestimating this time too i mean do we're like if even if we have miles bridges you're banking on gordon hayward being healthy which i, I just that's two years in a row man where he just has not been able to complete the second half of the season and has not been able to play in the play-in when we need him the most so i don't i don't know what you want to think about that and like i said uh we like i said you can't we don't know what's going on with miles bridges uh, you're hoping Terry Rozier puts up the same numbers, and it, Terry is not like he's a computer. Terry plays well, so I'm not doubting that, but I'm just saying that's a lot to just assume when the team already has a lot to assume as is. Um, you're, you're assuming Melo takes another step. You're assuming that Mark Williams can be some kind of, you know, savior on the defensive end when the whole team needs to play better. You're putting a lot of pressure on Steve Clifford, which I know at first I know I said I wasn't the biggest fan of the Steve Clifford hiring and then I be and you know slowly and more and more I became more of a fan of the Steve Clifford hiring but now even even if let's say I didn't like Steve Clifford hiring at all to this day this is completely unfair to expect and say things like we should win a playoff series with this roster that you're giving him it's just not going to work out we still don't even have a backup point guard and you know and like we don't know if we're, we're, we don't even know if we have a starting center there's just so much to just talk about and the fact that he's just constantly saying that we're gonna make the playoffs is just ridiculous to me I mean I, I don't know why he keeps saying it I don't understand what's going on with the front office I talked about in a video um, before when I was talking about summer league about effort um, like on the court and how it you know is coming down from the front office that's what this is why like you're fired you fired Jim Brago supposedly for these same reasons one, I mean, his performance of, you know, his coaching performance in the play-in games. But two, you player, player accountability and things like that. You're doing the same thing. Like, you're literally doing the same thing by saying this team's going to make the playoffs and this team's going to win a seat, you know, playoffs here. I get it that you want to hype the players up. I get it that you um, you want to have faith. I'm not saying go in there and dog the team. That would be wrong as well. But let's be honest, dude. Like, we don't have a backup point guard. We don't even really know who the starting center is going to be because it can't be Mason Plumlee again. I don't care if it's Nick Richards, you know, regardless of how I feel about him or Mark, it can't it just can't be Mason Plumley again if you want to win a playoff series. So that and that's what he was saying. So that's why it's so confusing that he just feels so strong about how good this team is. And I'm not saying the team's not talented for sure, but everybody else got better and we're kind of just running it back. And that's kind of my issue. If we just if the Hawks didn't do what the Hawks did, if like I said, with the Wizards, just like I said, I don't really expect the Wizards to just take over and be better than the Hornets. But what I'm saying is they're just going to put pressure on the Hornets. Uh, you know, you got the Knicks who got Jalen Brunson. You're hoping, you know, if you're a Knicks fan, you're hoping that Julius Randle goes back to where he will, how he was the first year in New York. And then R.J. Barrett gets better. Like, these are things you have to think about. And all we did was just run it back. And I know I said the same thing about, like, you're doing assumptions 
Uh, same way you would make an assumption that Bradley Beal plays and stays healthy. Same way you would assume that, you know, RJ Barrett. But still, these are things that are happening around us and we just kept the same exact team. So it's just frustrating to think that he thinks that this is a good team. I don't understand. Like, and in every year it's the same thing where at the end of the year it's like, hey, you know, like, I'm sorry, but we overestimated. So I don't know what he thinks is going on, but I just want to talk about this video. I just want to talk about that podcast or interview rather, just because it just blew my mind. It just blows my mind because of the fact that this happens every single year and he's not held accountable for it. I don't know what Michael Jordan is doing. The one thing about this organization is that they're too buddy buddy. And I don't know if that's a smart, small market thing or whatever. But it just seems like the organization is way too buddy-buddy. As in, oh, well, he's my friend, so I'm going to just let him do whatever. Or this is my guy, so I'm going to let him do whatever. Like, we got to stop doing that. If someone's not doing a job, then get rid of him. Or let him know. Like, you don't have to necessarily fire him. Like, at, at the end of the day, I know we call for people's jobs, but I'm not going to do that. That's, that's a little rough. But make him like just how does he not understand that this isn't going to work i know you're hoping like guys like james book Knight, kai jones jc thor step up but come on man like you have to look like even detroit got better and once again i'm not saying detroit is going to like leap um the hornets i'm not saying that at all but that they're not going to be as bad as they were last year they're going to play a lot harder we, we did lose it like a what was it an overtime game i know it was the last second shot but i can't remember if it was an overtime game or not we lost to the Detroit Pistons last year because of a Kelly Olynyk shot. So, like those games are just going to be much harder, and that's my point. I'm not saying the teams are going to be better, but those games are going to be the walking apart like we thought they, you know, they kind of were last year. We're going, it's going to be more difficult, and we if we don't know what kind of team, like we don't know how the schedule is going to play out, like is, you know what I mean. Things, these are the kind of things I'm thinking about as far as like you just saying that this team's ready to win a playoff series like have you seen the east the east is deadly i don't see toronto taking a step back i don't see miami taking a step back okay the nets might fall out but what we go from 10 to 9 maybe and then we go from 10 to 9 we're still in the play-in and we don't perform well in the play-in like at this point we should be ready to skip the, at, at this point i don't even need to win a playoff series <laughs> to be honest to me he's thinking about the wrong thing at, at this point if I can make, if the team can make the playoffs without having to go through the play-in and just fight in in the first round, I don't care who they play, I don't care how they, well, I do care how they lose. As long as they don't get blown out every game, every game is close. Even if they get swept, that's fine by me. That's a step in in the right direction. But us going to the play-in again, I do not want. I, I don't even care if we win at that point. We should not have to do that unless there was like some crazy injury, which I hope doesn't happen. But if we're a fully healthy team, we should not be touching that play-in. But with this roster. That's what we're kind of what we're going to do. Like you're relying. Like once again, everybody keeps saying, "Well, Gordon Hayward's healthy." Gordon, Hay Gordon Hayward has never been healthy since he left um, Utah, and and that just is what it is. It's not it's not his fault. It, it's it's just not. But it's the reality of it. He has not been healthy since he left Utah. He cannot stay healthy. Or it, the one time he did, I think he his minutes were super. Like he was he didn't play as much. But you're asking him to be a vocal point a focal point on this team he can't play more than 40 games that's ridiculous it's not, once again i know you paid him all the money and he should be playing the games but at this point you know what he is that's unfair to him to expect him to play a whole season and then we show last year that we don't really necessarily need him to win games so it's just it's just frustrating I, and um yeah i just want to talk about it uh, and get this video out because i do have a player profile that's what my new series is called where i just talk about players who are new to the team or on the summer league roster so shout out to everybody that gave lj figueroa love he much deserves it i have one about tyshawn alexander later today um, but i just want to get this out because i don't want those like videos to kind of overlap but that that was just insane to me I and mean, if you haven't once again go check out uh hornets hive cast it's a podcast um you can find it on spotify or probably anywhere you get podcast i just press this to it on spotify but it's like a 20 minute interview but it's just crazy that mitch cupshat really thinks that but anyway that does it for this video uh, i'm on road 200 subscribers before august y'all doing a great job i appreciate the support a lot like i'm just here to talk about basketball and call it how i see it and y'all are you know y'all y'all like it so uh just continue to have that conversation down in the comment section below because i respond to all comments but like once again i'll see you later today because I have that video about Tyshawn Alexander coming out. So I'll see you then. Peace.